Route 66 Raceway, Friday. There he is. It's raining, and we have a superstar amongst us. Look who's here. What in Debbie the Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing at an NHRA National? Uh, well, they snuck me in the gates. Snuck you yeah. in the gate. I told them, actually, I knew I, I told them I knew Clay Milliken. They're like, follow up, sir. They led me right here. 30 seconds. I see doors on it. Debbie made the doors. Oh, you don't even know what happened. <laughs> we got we got to load we went to load the car up Monday night. It cranked really funny, so check compression. Compression's down on cylinder five. Pull the head. Piston on number five's messed up, so we pull the pan. Find two more bent rods. Uh, wrist pin bushings blown out, so we pull the whole car apart. We drive overnight to Steve Morris's. Steve boards the block. We overnight fishing from Wiseco. Um, they get to us yesterday morning after we drove on it. Put the motor trans, everything back together, back in the car, get it fired up. We leave Steve's shop at midnight last night. We got here at 3.30 this morning. How are you doing? I'm, That's enough about us. I'm we good. About you. I am good. Are you going to kill me in a go-kart race? That could have been me. <laughs> hey, but there was. there is no video proof of that. I just admitted to it. <laughs> but you know what? You've done something I've never done. What is that? Blew my own doors off. Don't forget the windshield. And the windshield. Okay. <laughs> I don't have doors. I've, I've blown the body off of the dragster before. but I think that takes the cake. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. does. It does. How fast were you going? Probably 250 or something right, like that. Yeah. So, she only but, goes fast enough to boil water. But Too I cold. was upside down when I did it. <laughs> dragster. Takes the yeah, dragsters. I'm not competing for that. Okay? Yeah, please don't. <laughs> Big wheelies and flipping upside down. Not a good idea. <laughs> All right, rolling up for Q1. It's been a little rainy today. Hadn't slowed us down. We're pretty much on time, but it is chilly out, like 69 degrees. Ought to be really fast. Got some of the Bailey crew back here. They're uh, getting a little whiff of nitro. Aiden's thinking about tipping the can a little bit in the wagon, maybe. Get a little stinky in that thing, make it go fast. Burns up parts doing that though. Does it? Yeah, like instantly. <laughs> or eh, hopefully in our case right now, about 3.71 is gonna be my guess. That's my guess what we're gonna run, 371. But I really don't know what we're tuned up to try to do. So we'll find out, but we're rolling up, gonna see what happens here. It's like 21, I think 21 top fuel cars. So pretty dang important we get it down through here on the first one makes it so much easier if you know you're qualified to make Saturday much, much better. A lot of cars would be interested. Track hadn't been run on since 2019. I think they did do a points race here last year, but we're good to go. The majority of the cars that have ran so far, and I think almost every funny car, in the left lane, tire shake. Uh, we run alongside Tony Schumacher, and he shook as well in the right lane. We were in the left lane. Uh, a lot of shaking going on out there. I don't even know. A couple cars, I think, have made it down, but nothing like screaming quick or fast. All I know is uh, there's a Tylenol in my future. That hurt. I can't even blame Izzy no more. He's not the tire guy. Nope. The head's come off, and that's my fault. <laughs> if they come off, we got a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that was a pretty hard shake. Lady Power. Yeah. Almost like it wasn't fast enough at the step, right? Yeah. That was E1. Yeah. Early. Similar power. Similar. 
I mean, there's Friday night. Yep. I mean, the motor's more, you know, definitely more up than yeah. it was at Charlotte. He wanted it look similar. Yeah. yeah, it did. But you think the shake felt different though, right? Like it Charlotte? just was hot. It was, the one while ago was just really, really hard and the one at Charlotte felt a little like a faster shake. That looks like old school tire shake where we used to have square to corner tires. Yeah. Like that would, that could be pedaled and, and fixed. Right. Rad dog just cruising. There's the Easter. Headed back to the house. <laughs> Billy just ride Saturday morning and I am out on a bit of an adventure sneaking my way into the long time closed Chicagoland Speedway an incredible beautiful one time beautiful facility closed and I just wanted to go Check it out. Looks like we got some old vehicles parked. Security with flats. Under the grandstands here. Holy moly. Y'all are not going to believe what I'm seeing right now. Look at that. Wow. Holy moly at the Ford vehicles parked out there. Wow. We got to check this out try to get where I can get y'all a better view first of all how big and beautiful this place is wow I hope through this fence y'all can see look at all the Fords all brand new Fords I'm assuming look at that I'm assuming they are all there due to chip shortage Kind of crazy that a place like this is not being used. Incredible. All right, that was our uh, quick Saturday morning adventure. Let's go drag racing. Got to get the tire shake out, stomp on that loud pedal quickly and fast down the racetrack. Let's do that today. All right. We're rolling, Jimmo. We're rolling. Rolling. Time to go. It is Q2 coming up. Beautiful day out. A lot of sun on the racetrack, but we are ready to go. Let's see what happens here. Ready? wasn't real fast, quick. Um, kind of moved around a little bit. Reason is, put a hole out very early. I don't know if it was at the step. John said it was real early, so uh, 21 cars here. We gotta get this thing down the racetrack. We wanna be a part of the show on Sunday, so we gotta make it go down the racetrack. Uh, race cars, doggone it. We'll figure it out. Number, Number seven. seven. Okay. Hey, you know, I don't really understand why that would go out with more primary on it, so it had more loaded on it. Well, we didn't have like our 90 grams. Right, right, but it was more than yesterday. Well, it was it was actually because it was 115 degrees. Oh, it's that high. Yeah. Okay. So I mean we you know it was greasy up there. Yeah. So like we were at 78, which is about you know, oh, yeah. I was just wondering if the blower like because I I mean I was conservative, no doubt. I wonder if it didn't have enough 
poop in it. Go time, Q3. We are currently setting number 16 with five cars behind us. Pretty dang vital we go down the racetrack with a solid run right here. We don't have to rotate the earth and go number one, but we need just a solid run right down the racetrack, get ourselves in this show solidly so we can go out there and play tomorrow. Huge crowd here, it's awesome. We hadn't been here since 2019, so it's nice to see this place pretty well packed out. It's pretty cool. But, Q3, stomp on that loud pedal. Go all the way to the finish line, under power. <laughs> Thank goodness it's a passing one. 376, 330. Pressure relief right there. We were in serious danger of not getting in the show. To be honest, the bump was what, John? Like 480 when we went up there. And by the time it was time for us to go, the bump was 380. So in my mind, that took out any possibility of Pedaling it and getting it in the show is hard to pedal and go 380, but we were prepared to do whatever we needed to do to try to go down the racetrack. But here's the numbers real quick: 840, 213, 303, 286, 376, 330. Whew. Heart rate was up on that. I'll promise you. It's a it's a scary thing when you're not in by the time it was time for us to go we were far out of the field near the very bottom 21 cars here but everybody on this team boom got it done that's what i'm talking about got it done what we had to do <laughs> well that's like when we I'll tested take, take. you know what i mean that's, oh, I know. Yeah. I know. that's what i did i'm like all right it's way more important about going straight to the so I put 12 gram primary on that. I've never done that before. <laughs> I was like, I told Jesse, I said, I really don't give a No, yeah. you gotta do something. And it makes good power, one 330. Yeah. Just it's ain't running in the middle. It, trying to give you a number, I ain't gonna give you a number. So it didn't have a big lock up, you know, like yeah. in the middle. But only right. down there, I'm gonna say 500 feet. It was like, Kicked me in the butt and Rick started ripping. It was a plus. But I mean, it was not a good plus. Yeah. It was definitely not completely normal. Like it, it was definitely fixing to run 330 yeah. late. So I don't know, maybe it did as well as the plus. Yeah. And, shut um, off, kind of like crap. We got a little leak, but I'm worried about the blower. So I like, get my normal deal, but it did the, uh, uh, um, I, I told Jesse, you know, like those checks, where if I can get out of the suit, so they might want to follow them. Yeah, it's, it's like it went dead, normal, oh, yeah. and then it tried to kind of start again, and then it popped. Okay. Well, hopefully it's yeah. That was huge, y'all. Uh, we needed that. Y'all always wondering about me on my phone. If you are, maybe you're not. So what I do is I send my sisters and Rick a text to what we did. If y'all always wondering, I'm not paying attention. Actually, I'm sending info out to people that uh, need to know what we did. Especially since our team owner's got 8,000 different types of racers. Exactly. <laughs>
Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today. Any objections? You're just objecting because you're not the clutch assistant anymore. That's it. That's definitely not. Right. <laughs> you know. But then you don't want Blake stuck with me for the rest of forever. <laughs> no, I want Blake. See, this is the Blake, problem. Oh, okay, okay. I get it. First thing I want to tell everybody is, is thank you. You know, because um, these cars don't run by just playing. You know, they run with a great group of people and, and supporting cast that, like, you know, makes things happen. And, and um, you know, all of you, you know, like, I mean, we, we struggled this year, you know, and, and um, you know, at the end of last year, it was like, man, those guys, if they can get all these new parts and all this stuff, they're going to go out and, and um, they're going to, they're going to be really good. Well, we got all these new parts and new, new car and all this stuff, and, and it's been a learning curve for me, and, um, you know, and, and, uh, and I take full responsibility for for us not you know being where we think we should be because we know we're better than what we're showing you know qualifying on race day and um you know as as a crew chief the one thing that i've learned over the years is is having confidence in in what you do and um all those years i worked for connie flood and i was telling clay this like and, and dan is like that guy, like, now granted, he paid for everything, and he could do whatever he wants, and he didn't need sponsors, but when he rolled up there, he didn't give a shit. Like, he went up there, like, I'm gonna run this thing as hard as I know how to run it, and, um, and if it works, great, and if it don't, that's fine, too, and, and, um, and, he, and he taught me that way of racing, and, um, Last year, when, when Rick came aboard with the team, and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Austin's got, like, instead of, like, one set of rods, there's, like, 20 sets of rods here, and hundreds of pistons, and, you know, Kaylin's got this, you know, Wayne's got some new heads, and, you know, we, we got a, a couple nice new blowers, and all this stuff, so I was like, oh, man, we can start pushing this thing harder, and, and it, and it showed, and the car ran better, and we, and we did better. There were things that we had to learn, you know, as a team, we had to learn to be better how we approach race day and how we, you know, attack that. But, um, you know, this year, it's like, yeah, we've got all this nice new stuff, and, and it's been a, a learning curve for me, and I've um, abandoned my thinking sometimes because Know, and I know we all feel this way and, and um, you know Rick saved his team and um, you know because who knows where we would be right now without him and, um, and I, I want to like you know so bad and so good for him and I know Clay does and I know every one of you do because he, he saved his team and he like kept us all together and then he, then he allowed us to bring in you know, what I felt were some missing pieces for our team, you know, and, and you guys are, are awesome, like, working on the car, and, um, you know, I told Dennis this this morning, I said, nobody's doing anything wrong, I said, to me, it's not Clay, it's not any of you, it's me, and the, and the decisions that I'm making, because, you know, I'm trying too hard, and I'm overthinking things. And it's like you need, you need to get back to basics. And, and um, sometimes you got to get kicked in the teeth a few times, and uh, to, to understand and get back to what what you know how to do. I mean, we we know this car likes primary, it likes being run hard, it likes all those things. And as Clay's told me a million, a million and one times now, including today, this car likes being kicked in the ass hard. And um, I felt like we left Vegas, uh, especially our test session, that went really well. And I think we fixed some things that we have in the car out in the middle. Charlotte looked pretty good until the first round. And um, we 
race track was good and I didn't take advantage of it. It was the same thing last night. And it's like, you gotta get back to what we know how to do. Our problem wasn't always on the starting line. Most of our problems this year have been out there. And I think we addressed that, you know. Um, and, and I think I think that's gonna lead to better performance as we get on higher race tracks and stuff. Rick sent a video. Talked to him on the phone, and I just love this guy. Like, and um, he's got like thousands of race teams. I think you never know what he's got, and he's all over the place. And he's down there at Indy, you know, watching his his Indy car qualify. But he keeps a good eye on us, and I love it when he's here. Like when him and Robbie were here in Charlotte, I I love them being involved in this team. But, Rick's got his fingers in a lot of things and, and he cares about everything that he does and he cares about the people that he has and, and he's really a, um, the more I get to know him, he's, he's really a, a, a pretty special guy and I think we're pretty fortunate to have him as an owner, but I want you guys to gather up. Hey team, man, I have to send you a video, it's uh, been a long day, I've been trying to leave you guys alone watching and following every single uh, second of it and um, had a great 60 foot time and uh, way to go run a number and uh, I know it's tough and uh, I know you guys were as worried uh, as I was and uh, just hug over the phone every one of you appreciate all the effort appreciate not giving up it was a clutch clutch last minute do or die and you guys came through so proud of you guys god bless that's cool, you know, and, and um, you know, Robbie, you know, he sent me a little text message as well, and, and um, you know, that these people, they care about us, and, and you know, Stacy's here, you know, she cares about what she does over there, but she also cares immensely about what we do out on the racetrack, and, um, you know, so the, the support we have, from everybody at Rick Weir Racing, because we're not, it's not just Rick watching us or Robbie watching us, our other teams watch us. Just like I've gotten into, like, I want to know what our cup cars are doing, I want to know what the Indy car team is doing, and IMSA, and you know, everything. So, and those are all like racing that I would have never really cared to watch before, but now I do because Rick's involved. But, and, um, you know, and I want to see all of these teams uh, do good. And, um, but I just think, you know, like, this team, like, you guys are, are a pretty special group. And um, you, you don't give up on anything. You don't um, piss and moan and, you know, throw shit. It's like everybody puts their heads down and they work and they work hard no matter what happens. You know, uh, we lose first round. Nobody comes back and, you know, is just pissed off and just like, we're going to get it in the next race. So, like, when I hear you guys, like, the, the, the confidence that you guys have in me, that means a lot to me, you know, because as Jesse knows, I mean, I've been on some teams, you know, that he, he, he was part of. It's like the crew, you didn't know what they thought of me. And uh, they could be pissed off and, and uh, really just get off or, carry on and stuff like that but you guys are you always have a smile on your face and you're always like we're gonna get it the next run and uh you know that means a lot to me and, um, remember when i started tuning cars on my own and um, i remember the first run i made and connie wasn't there he was actually in court that day and he told me to run the car and he goes, you can't talk to me. I won't be there. I won't eat anything. So you got to figure this out on your own. I'm like, go. Oh. So we went out there. It was at Pomona on the run. And it went out. And it dropped cylinders. It freaking pushed the gasket out. And I'm like, oh. Man. So the Connie comes there. And he goes, well, how'd we do? And I go, well, not worth the crap, boss. And I told him. He goes, well, it's just part of it. 
and he goes, uh, you know, well, what you do now to keep that from happening? So I told him what I would do. And, um, you know, so he was there the rest of the weekend. This was at the World Finals. Well, this was in um, uh, 2000. 2001, we didn't test, we didn't anything. Three days before we were going to the race, he says, oh, by the way, I'm not going to be there Thursday. He goes, um, you got to run the car on your own. I go, okay. I go, well, we didn't test. And we changed camshafts. We changed fuel pumps. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. I'm like, I got a good shot at this, right? We changed some stuff, right? And, um, but after that first time, the way Connie was, it gave me confidence, like, like going up there and running the car. And I said, this is what I think needs to be done. And we went out and we ran low ET. We were number one qualifier, so same thing. Connie shows up. He's, he had a few cocktails in it because he was out at the airport. And um, he's got his baby blue suit on and a tie because he was in the, the uh, court. And uh, well, how did we do? <laughs> I said, we're number one qualifier. And at the time, like we ran 315 miles an hour, which was a big deal. That was a fast speed back then because we had just switched to 90 percent. We were at a quarter mile, we were at 457. And um, he goes, You're shitting me. And I saw him show him. He was so excited, and his son Scott was there too. And we were just running the one car with Doug. We had a spare car. He wanted to pull that out the next day and put Scott in it to run. I go, Connie, we have no like crew we don't have enough stuff to do all this and he's like oh figure so he like goes around the pits and he's like trying to wrangle up people scott he's he's been drinking with his dad a little bit too and scott's like come on buddy like i want to drive tomorrow and i'm like dude you're killing me man you're killing me and um so the next one i was stressed out because i'm like connie don't like he doesn't understand the word no or can't so I went in the next morning and I'm stressing out the whole night. I couldn't sleep. I'm like, oh, this, I, I go, man, we just ran good. Now we got to put another car together and it's just us. And you know, it's going to be a fiasco. So Scott rides with me out to the track and I'll tell him, I go, Scott, this is not a good idea. And uh, he's like, oh, come on, man. He goes, you know, kind of like the old man's going to, he's going to be, like pissed off if you don't do this and I said we can't do it and we got to the track and Connie got there and he sat down and I, I walked up to Connie and I go I go um, hey Connie so I need to talk to you he's like what's up and I go we can't bring this other car out we're not set up for it we don't have the tools we don't have the people he goes yep yeah, you're right and I, I go what <laughs> He goes, yeah, that wouldn't be a good deal. He said, let's go out and race this car. And uh, his mission after that, because uh, I don't know how many of you guys know Tim Richards. He's a Hall of Fame crew chief and a uh, very smart guy. Timmy was hanging out with us and his wife, Kim. And Tim Richards started, like, this egg and Connie on. He goes, hey, that kid ran quicker than you. And um, so Connie, we ran. And, and, made like three more qualified runs and uh connie got close but not but we didn't pass that number you know that we ran on thursday and um timmy richards was just drilling connie so bad <laughs> and connie was trying so hard to like outrun that number but it was really cool and, it, and like for me um it was a huge confidence builder for me and um and it helped me out you know propel me you know up you know to running cars more and having more confidence what I do but that's you know running one of these cars is a, it's a it's a job and I always tell people you gotta have big shoulders because when the car doesn't run good everybody looks at you like dumbass what'd you do why'd you make it smoke the tire drop the cylinder shake whatever it may be but then when it runs good everybody's happy you know and and this thing's such a um, a roller coaster ride all the time. Clay knows this, you know, 
better than anybody. It's like some days you're like, you know, um, you're like the, you're the guy and you can't do anything wrong. And then there's other days you can't do anything right. And um, but the one thing I can tell you, being a crew chief, the thing you always have to have as a crew chief is confidence in your crew. And that is something that I have wholeheartedly, 100 percent. And even as even as screwed up as, as uh, the car's been this year, my confidence in all of you has never changed. You know, because I feel like I've got a really good, really hungry crew, and, and, it, and it goes to say as bad as I want to win for Rick and everybody at RWR. I want to win for these two because I love them to death and you and all of you is the same thing it's like because I want you know Andrew's experience to win Jesse has I have but like there's like a few of you here that have it I know Kaylin has because I was in the other lane at the end that one time and um, um but I want, I want this team to experience that. And I want it so bad for Clay to be able to hand Wally to, to Rick. You know, and, and because that's, Rick needs one of those for his collection of stuff that he has. You know, but I can't thank all of you enough for um, the hard work you put in and, and um, your confidence in me and your never give, never give up, never say die attitude because Going into a, a last run like that, knowing that I have you guys in my corner and this guy driving, you know, that means a lot to me. And it, I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous. I don't normally get nervous and stuff like that. Um, but it could have been a lot worse if I didn't have, have you guys in my corner and this guy driving the race car. So I reached in and I told Clay, I said, man, I've stacked some primary. And he's like, all good, brother. Like he's <laughs> typical Clay. <laughs> he said, we're going to be fine. And, um, and that means a lot. You know, so I don't want to ramble on too much, but, you know, you guys are awesome. I love you, all, all of you. And, you know, we're, we're getting this ship turned around. And, and um, like I told Clay, when we do, it's going to be epic. You know, and she go on a roll, get back to, you know, winning rounds. You know, we win some rounds, then, then we're going to win races. And, um, you know, take that methodical approach, you know, about racing on Sunday. And um, this field is, is so tight. From number one to 16, it's a little over a tenth of a second. That's nuts. And um, so that means it's a tight field. That means that, you know, we need to do our best to put a good race car out there first round and then let this guy do the rest. Because he's, he's a guy I want in, in a race car in a situation like that. So thank you guys. Hopefully that everybody get y'all a better view and get a little exercise running up some grandstands wow a lot of vehicles out there wow 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 no wonder there's no cars on the dealership lots they're all out here crazy